this is the Chevy Volt. This is Chevy's electric car, which means this is startup. I'm running. I wouldn't know that if it didn't make weird computer boot up noises. All right, we're off. This car is pretty much software on wheels. So what happens when you need a reboot? Do you push the on start button and say, hey, could you reboot my car? You're paying for the technology. The one we've got is just over $44,000. And frankly, that's a bit too expensive. But of course, the government is here to help us all. It's a $7,500 discount. Now, GM claims that you can get about 40 miles on a single charge. Well, that's gonna depend on your driving style, the temperature outside, the conditions of the road. But if you have a commute between about 20 and 30 miles, this car might be perfect for you. And it starts to feel so normal that you forget how really unique and special it is. Charging is simple. You've got a port that looks like a gasoline port that essentially has a special plug inside it. And there's a series of lights and chirps and beeps and honks that the car does to tell you, hey, you've done it right. So it's kind of hard to get it wrong. And unlike something like the Leaf, this is a car that you could buy and have it as your only family car. If one of the parents is commuting every day less than 30 miles, you have an all-electric vehicle. But if you want to throw the kids in the back and you want to drive cross-country to the Grand Canyon, this is a perfectly normal and acceptable car. The Chevy Volt is revolutionary. And I don't say that because that's what Chevy's PR department wants me to think. I say that because a revolutionary idea changes thinking. Before this, nobody was thinking about putting an onboard generator in the car to recharge the battery. What's unique about the drivetrain on the Volt is it is just about every idea out there. Right now I'm running on full electric power. When the battery runs down to about 30%, the gasoline engine is going to kick on and it's going to start recharging the battery and driving the electrics. So that makes it a series hybrid. The Prius is a parallel hybrid where the gasoline motor and the electric motor drive the wheels. This car can do that too, so it's doing all of the above. What I like about the Volt is GM has really introduced a new styling theme, and it had to. It's got some style to it. It's not necessarily a simple looking car, but it's a simple shape. The Volt's more attractive than the Prius, but let me stop there and say that's not saying much. Pretty slab sided. They've done some good things with highlights and lowlights to make it look like it has less mass on the side than it really does. It has a huge door. I was driving down the freeway and I just noticed a presence to my right. And I look over and there's a guy driving an SRT Jeep and he gives me a thumbs up. Why on earth does he care about this car? But this car gets noticed, and I'm actually surprised by how much. The interior needed to be different. It needed to be stylish and functional and clean and interesting to look at. There's a lot going on here. There's lines everywhere. You feel like you're sitting in the latest electronic gadget because you are. The buttons on the instrument panel are actually just a flat, smooth, plastic surface, so when you touch it, you're just touching the word and that is actually the button. The problem is, when you're going at driving speeds, it is unfathomable. I have no idea what anything does. I can't look down, glance, and go, oh, that's what I need. So plan on sitting down with your manual in the car and going, oh, I see. If you look at it for a while, it's actually fairly well laid out. The hierarchy of everything, even though it's initially gonna seem overwhelming. But since we're talking about, from the ground up, a brand new car, new technology, new platform, everything, you've got to offset that cost somewhere. And that comes into interior materials. It's not a $40,000 car interior. What I don't like are these painted inserts in the doors. It feels cheap and plasticky. The textures in here are really quite nice, and the seating position is good. Except for these seats. These aren't terrible. Trust me, honestly, these are some of the better Chevy seats I've sat in but that's still not a very good category. It's like being the least of the ugly girls. So if you're gonna build a brand new car, why can't you make the back seats fit a six foot three person? But if you've got two kids that are under driving age in the back, that could work. Now I'm driving on full electric mode here. I've got about 25 miles, it says, remaining on my charge, and it's odd. All I'm hearing is the tires. You're rolling through the world 
honestly believing that the car has died. Listen, nothing. Dead silence. It's a cathedral in here. And it's actually a pretty nice ride, especially in town. Now the handling is a bit odd. It almost feels like the bottom six inches of the car are filled with water. The whole car kind of sloshes in the corners and you can feel that really low weight and it's this huge T battery pack. Wow, you can really feel the body roll. And it's a very softly sprung car, so for commuting on the freeway too, it's got a good ride. Chevy's really found the right mix. Volt has three driving modes, and one of them is Sport. Now, let's not kid ourselves. You're not going to take your Volt to your local track, but you notice a change. Drive mode, Sport, bury your foot. That's actually pretty impressive because electric motors have maximum torque at zero RPM. Is it going to win any acceleration awards? No. And any normal city driving situation, you'll find this to have more than enough power, perfectly acceptable handling. The only question I have is the brakes. They feel hard to modulate. And even if you're parallel parking, you can't quite feel where the brakes are going to engage. I despise these brakes. I'm sure you'll get used to it, but they're brakes. Why are you getting used to it? As a usable car, I think the Volt kicks the Prius right in the teeth. And if I were commuting somewhere, I've got about you know, a 20 mile, even 40 or 50 mile commute, I think I'd buy this car. This is just about commuting, saving money on gas, and that is directly affecting your wallet. There's nothing about the Volt that keeps me from recommending it. It's not perfect, it's not flawless, but if anybody said to me, I'm considering a Volt or any of its competitors, I would recommend the Volt to that person. Oh look, I'm sitting next to a Prius. I'm better than you are. So it's not the handling genius. It's not an acceleration monster. This is a commuter mobile. It's just a nice, quiet sanctuary. If you've even thought about a Volt or getting something that is a, just a commuter car that can be versatile, you should look at this car. In fact, I bet it will surprise you.